Office from the U.S. Virgin Islands and a former impeachment manager. Congresswoman, good to see you. Do you have any sense of if Congressman Brooks warned his colleagues about the risk of violence on January 6th, since he apparently had advance warning? For example, did he warn you? Well, I have not had any conversations with Mo Brooks about this or pretty much any subject, uh, anything of substance. So uh, has he warned other individuals? I don't know, and we'll soon find out. So tell me specifically to that point, should he be a witness in the Select Committee's investigation? Oh, well, you know, I think that the Select Committee has a tremendous leadership uh, through its chairman, Benny Thompson, along with the incredible um, members, uh, my colleagues who are there. And I'm sure that they're going to be spending quite a bit of time ascertaining who, what is the correct subpoenas, correct witnesses, correct documents to get. I wouldn't want to impose uh, my opinion on the work that they're doing to determine who and uh, what material they should get. Incredibly. But, you know, I, I, can under, I could believe that there may, in fact, be members of Congress who are material witnesses to that day. I was going to say incredibly disciplined of you. Well, today we learned that Kevin McCarthy <laughs> attempted to make a connection between the security breach of January 6th and the Kavanaugh protests in 2018. How do you make sense of that latest attack? Well, you know, you can't make sense out of stuff that isn't sense, right? And, uh, you know, McCarthy is stretching incredulity each and every time he speaks. Uh, listen, just a couple of weeks ago, he said there was no insurrection, uh, that there was no riot. And now he's saying there is a riot and the person to blame is Nancy Pelosi. We know that Speaker Pelosi does not have authority over Capitol Police. But uh, after that incredible, heartfelt uh, the testimony of the four officers of the Capitol Police, as well as the Metropolitan Police, there is no way that he could continue to say that there was, in fact, a riot. And now he's got to shift the blame. As a former prosecutor, I know that when people are not dealing with facts anymore, when the facts are not working with them, they will throw out uh, red herrings as well as throw out process. And that's where Kevin McCarthy is right now. I'm going to loop back to that emotional testimony. But before I do a subject that I uh, assume you're going to be more comfortable opining on, which is that The Washington Post has new reporting on Donald Trump's attempts to pressure the Department of Justice to investigate the 2020 election. They reveal that, quote, Trump called his acting attorney general nearly every day at the end of last year to alert him to claims of voter fraud or alleged improper vote counts. The notes from some of those calls could be turned over to Congress in a matter of days. So, Congressman, given everything we know about the former president, what do you think those notes will reveal? What questions would you have about them? Well, if the notes are uh, extemporaneous to the discussion, uh, and I believe that, you know, many officials at the Department of Justice would, in fact, take notes uh, as their very detailed notes in their conversation with the president or with principals of that nature, uh, I would think that they'd reveal a man that was desperate to retain power, a man that's desperation led him to continue to not only incite the riots, but to assist in the planning of that uh, rally and the riots that led to an attempted coup of our government. So we'll see how far he went with uh, his attorney general and with other uh, officials at the Justice Department. I wouldn't be surprised that there were individuals at the Department of Defense and other places as well that the president was attempting to sub utilize to subvert uh, the democratic process and keep himself in office. I promise that we would go back to that emotional testimony that we heard after testifying to the select committee on Tuesday. Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn responded last night to some of the very personal attacks that have been hurled his way on Fox News. Take a listen. You know what hurts more than or just as much as what happened on January 6th, the attacks the attacks on our credibility and that we're lying and that we don't love our country and we're fake police officers. It's more than frustrating. It makes you so angry. But unwavered, and I'm still going to go do my job tomorrow, just like I do for the last 13 years. Congressman, what goes through your mind as you hear that? Uh, you know, it's very emotional listening to him speak, as well as it 
was emotional for so many members and staff and uh, individuals who work in the Capitol complex, because we know that not only did they uh, fight to keep us safe, but to keep our democracy safe on that day. And the courage that each one of them have to continue to come to work after that each and every time and willing to defend us. Uh, you know, our heartfelt thanks go out to each and a, each one of them. Every time I see Capitol Police officers as I'm on the complex now, I make it a point to thank them, ask them how they are, how their day is, uh, let them know that they're appreciated. Uh, it appears now, and I think American people should see, that it is the Democrats who uh, believe that blue lives matter, that are thankful for those who defend our democracy and the Republicans, God help them. Well, let me ask you about that, because there are things like McCarthy going after Pelosi that you can step back and say, that's raw politics, right? That is the making mm -hmm. of a fundraising email. That's the making of an oppo ad. Something like attacking members of, of the Capitol Police, I fail to see what the political calculus is there. Uh, you know, I believe, and and you'll have we'll have to someday get into the mind uh, of these individuals that it is all about Trump. Um, anyone who speaks against the president or who stands in contrast to the false narrative that they're trying to put forward, that this was not a riot, that this was not an attempted coup, that President Trump did not try to overthrow our government, those individuals stand in the way. And the videotapes of the medieval fighting that these officers endured for four and five hours, uh, injuries, death in some cases, over 140 officers injured, uh, really stands in stark contrast to the false narrative and the misinformation that they're putting out. And so they must, in fact, uh, attack those individuals and try and tear them apart and try and tear apart what they have done uh, to defend our country against the attacks of the former president, and indeed, potentially, maybe even the attacks and the plotting of other members of Congress. All while, while Mo Brooks is wearing his bulletproof vest. All right, Congresswoman Stacey Pluskett, thank you so much. Thank Up you. Up next, Senator strike a deal on infrastructure, but will it pass muster with progressives in the House? Congresswoman Ilan Omar joins me after the break. And later, Steve Kornacki joins us to tell us the very latest on how Team USA is doing in Tokyo. The readout continues.